Hey guys, it's Tiny Sun Logan back with another video for you and today, or at least there's going to be a heck of a lot of videos going up today throughout the period of the day. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say straight off the bat to all of those of you that are finding my videos for the first time, uh, please remember to comment underneath and also subscribe as well. Go and take a look at the channel if you want to, there's lots and lots of other videos there, we've been doing this for a, a good while now. So yeah. And also, if you like them, tell your friends. But, without further ado, uh, the Maximus 4 Extreme. Obviously, this is Asus's top of the range, 1155 board intended for Sandy Bridge. Uh, just so those of you out there, everyone asks, no, you cannot use 1156 processors on this board. It's a whole new socket, it's a whole new chipset. So, uh, the ME4 is just for... 1155 CPUs. Now we're going to be testing this today with a 2600K which is at the present moment in time the top of the range i7 variant of the Sandy Bridge processors uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, now give you a up close look at the board because we've not been able to show you the chipset or the inside the socket or anything like that before so I'm going to give you a nice up close look at the board without all the heat sinks on uh, if you want to go and have a look at the uh, the other parts of the board, we've already done a preview about a month ago, so you can go and see the back panel and stuff, and that can all be found on the channel. But without excuse me, without further ado, let's have a look at the board, all dirty and nude. Right then, guys, I've got it. Uh, got the motherboard in the light tent, um, and. Basically, because of NDA, we've not been able to show you the chipset, we've not been able to show you the socket, so we're going to get down and dirty with all these things that have now suddenly become legal. Almost like a porn ban has been lifted. But that, even though it's down near the Southbridge area, that is the um, P67 chipset. I think my camera's going to play silly buggers today. But we weren't allowed to show you that at all previously. The smaller chip there, which is in the position that the North Bridge would normally be, that's actually an NVIDIA NF200. Hence the reason why we've got more lanes, although we have got PLX chip down here as well. But I just wanted to show you the socket and uh, the power delivery around the socket. Because we've got lots of digital stuff around the outside because there's a digital EPU chip hidden just there to control the digital power delivery but there is the socket that we weren't allowed to show you and there you have it, that's the board without all its heat sinks on, they are just over here that's the uh, MOSFET and then the NF200 heatsink and then just this small heatsink for the actual chipset which I have to admit doesn't get immensely hot at all. There it is again. I should see the board is there's quite a lot it's quite busy around the uh, chipset area here. Yeah, there we go. How does it perform though? Let's crack on with the next part of the video so you can find out. Right, so you've seen the board now. Now it's time for us to start having a look at the uh, performance and stuff like that. But something I do want to cover is the BIOS because this has the EFI BIOS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you in and then uh, give you a good chin wag about the BIOS and then we'll go into some uh, benchmarks and um, uh, sort of gameplay and stuff like that and then you can really can see all the uh, what the Sandy Bridge has to offer. Right then guys, you can see the BIOS here and I am using my mouse uh, and this may be the first time a lot of you have seen it. Uh, I've been using this for a little while, but I've not been allowed to show you. Now, uh, to go through, there's lots and lots of different areas 
uh, CPU performance settings. I mean, everything's there but with different names. But what I'm going to do is I'll take you through the basic bits of the BIOS and then I'm going to explain a few things to you as well. So if you go into the main section, you can see there that I'm on BIOS version 0221. Um, I have been using several different ASUS BIOSes, but this at the moment is the most stable. The last one that I had was absolutely shocking. It wouldn't let me overclock at all. Uh, you can see that we're using the i7-2600K at 3.4. Um, we've got 4 gigabyte of memory installed. It's only running 1333 at the moment because I've not done it, set anything. Uh, if you go into the advanced section, you get all the normal... Uh, settings there that tells you everything about your CPU um, and then obviously you can set things, turn things off so for um, so you can turn disable and enable um, hyper threading you can turn off turbo mode you can turn on turbo mode, you can turn off speed step turn off lots of stuff but if we go to let's make sure I've put everything back the way it should be Right, if we go to monitor, uh, there's all your different voltages there, so you can go into your BIOS and actually check these uh, live. Obviously you can see there that we're only running 1.45 on the RAM at the moment, I need to increase that. You can check all of those. Uh, you get a full range of temperatures as well and you can also set um, uh, overheat protection settings, CPU socket temperatures. Basically you can set all that up, nice, simple, intuitive layout where you can just choose the one that you want, it's lovely. Now something with uh, the BIOS, uh, with boot, you still get to choose your uh, the drive that you're using and stuff like that, but it's got a section here which is boot override. Now for argument's sake, if you had a USB stick in, you could just go and if you click the button, it then will go and boot from that item that one time. So it's like a quick select, so you've not got to manually set your boot options and just go in and go, right, I want that one to be all the time. If you just want to do it that once, you can just boot from it that once, which, especially for a bencher like me, where I only, do you know what I mean, I may just want to install uh, Windows 7, chuck my USB stick in with Windows 7 on, boot from it that once, jobs are good and it's all done and dusted. Right, now I'm going to go back to the overclocking. Uh, or the extreme tweaker section and start to uh, explain stuff to you. Um, if I go to AI Overclock Tuner, we'll go to Manual. Now you'll see we have got base clock here that we can adjust, uh, but there isn't a massive amount of uh, base clock that we can tune. The processors definitely don't like it at the moment, uh, but from everything that we've been told by Intel is, now this is where things get very strange, uh, you overclock the turbo limit so basically your CPU will still run at for argument's sake it's rated which is with this process of 3.4 gigahertz but the turbo mode kicks in when uh, you start to stress the CPU and that's when your overclock will kick in so for argument's sake if I put here 46 You'll see now that the target TPU CPU turbo mode speed is now 4.6 gigahertz, 46 times 100. Now, uh, as uh, you may want to go and have a look at my uh, other video that I've done uh, of the 2600 and the 2500K, because at the moment uh, the the Asus BIOS, I'm finding it very immature. It definitely needs a lot of work. I've, I've had massive problems trying to get this to run stably with my processors and I've put days into it. But just to show you how simple it can be, you can literally go to CPU level up, 4.6 gigahertz, okay, come down, just choose your memory frequency, 1600, DRAM time and control. Now I'm going to set my stock speeds for the RAM. As you can see, the BIOS is still quite quirky. Now I'm using the Mushkin RAM, uh, it's the red line, 1600 MHz. It will overclock, uh, but I'm leaving it at 1600. 
uh, 68624 so we go back so I've set all that I'm not going to set any of the voltages or anything like that because with the BIOS the way it is at the moment it will do 4.6 as a level up but if I start to mess about with the BIOS and stuff I can still only get to 4.6 gigahertz now if you go to the other video like I said to you before you'll find out basically the key to overclocking the 1155s is in will be in this part of the BIOS. Now pretty much what you want to do is just enable the maximum CPU power and then wang the um, the amperage right up. Now on the Intel board if I go and unlock everything, turn everything up, uh, I have been able to get 5.1 for a screenshot but 5 gigahertz with this CPU stable uh, which is one of the reasons why I know that the ASUS board, I was using an Intel board as well, this is just BIOS issues. Um, and it's just, there's quite a few quirky little problems with it, I've not really been able to push it that far. I have contacted ASUS and like I said I have got different BIOSes but the last one they sent me was just so much worse. So the BIOS of these is definitely going to be a work in progress. I would have thought, especially once all the reviews go out and people start saying it's really bad, that these will get fixed in the next two to four weeks and I'd hope to be able to get another chance to see how far I can really push the BIOS and the overclocking on these. But one thing I will say is to show you how good these can go, it's just with that CPU level up at 4.6 gigahertz. I can now F10 out, save it and that will be as solid as a rock. So 4.6 with a CPU level up, even a complete newbie would be able to uh, now set the BIOS up on this and have a 4.6 gigahertz processor which will be perfectly stable and as long as they've got decent cooling they will have no worries whatsoever. Now this is another BIOS, uh, these are quite quirky this BIOS, it keeps flashing in and out like that. Now the later ones that you couldn't overclock with, that it'll only flash up once. Um, but it will eventually get to Windows, it will be perfectly fine and we'll be able to run benchmarks and stuff like that. But what I'm going to do now is set up uh, for some benchmarking now and we'll, all the rest of the video that you will see will be running uh, the memory at 1600 MHz, 68624. Uh, the CPU will be at uh, 4.6 GHz turbo mode. But I will explain the ins and outs of the turbo mode for you in a second. Right then guys, I've got uh, Prime up here ready to run, but I basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you really close in so that you can see here the core speed and the multiplier and then the bus speed at the bottom. Okay, so we've got this one here is the core speed. That's because speed step is still on, so it's gone into an idle state of 1600 MHz. You've got the multiplier there, which it says 16 to 34. Um, basically, when it's in its idle state, 34 is the most that we can get to. But if I start Prime off now, you'll see instantly that it's gone up to 4.6 now. So we've got 4.6 core speed. 46 multiplier and that is basically the way the overclocking on these now work so if I come back out again you can see prime running up on the other side of the screen I'll stretch it out a bit more but quite strangely this is everything that we have to do with the sandy bridge now is almost opposite to the way that we would do things with um, the Halem, so 1366 and even the 1156 it's a very very new way of doing stuff but I don't want to go too much into it because until the BIOS uh, is made better by ASUS I'm not going to do like a proper overclock guide I just wanted to give you a rough idea of what's going on but what I'm going to do now is give you um, I'm going to put some benches on and we're going to uh, do some, w watch some full on benchmarks. Right, so we've got W Prime ready. 
literally the 32 uh, million doesn't take very long so we'll just run that quickly just to give you a uh, quick demonstration view the score at 4.6 gigahertz that has done the 32 million test in 6.396 seconds which is phenomenally fast. I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to do a couple more benches just so you've got something to watch so you can see the difference. We're going to do a uh, cine bench quickly and I'll also do a uh, POV and then we'll watch and then we'll do some 3D mark tests and then some game benches as well. We'll do cine bench rapidly. We'll do the Open GL one first quickly. Just more than anything to show you what is possible. These are all tests that you'll be able to see in the full review on Overclock 3D. There's, uh, we've all been working on this uh, over the Christmas and festive period. Brian and myself really have not had much sleep whatsoever to try and make sure that we can get this done get the little violins out but to be quite honest with you the only day we've actually had off uh, was Christmas Day the rest of the time we've just been working on these working on BIOSes it's been pretty full on right so we've got 68.85 frames per second there we are running a 570 as well but that's a very that's an amazing score uh, compared. Now we're going to run the CPU only test. You'll get a selection of boxes as it starts to render the picture and then they'll start to spiral around. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you all the different comparisons but if you want to see uh, the graphs so you can see it up against a 950, an 870, a 760 then just go to the review link at the side of the video um, and you'll be able to see all the graphs and everything that Brian's put together uh, in the main review on Overclock 3D. Well, that's got an 8.97 uh, point score on the CPU there which again is pretty phenomenal. I'm going to do point of view quickly. I'm going to do this all live with you on here. You can see the maximum temperature we've had so far has been 60 degrees down in the bottom right hand corner. Is slowly rendering away there. Well, not slowly, and by any stretch of the imagination. And there we've got a score of 953.36, but it's averaged 7,199. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start cutting in and out, I'm going to uh, run Vantage and I'll show you the score at Vantage at the end. I'll let you watch 3D Mark 11, I'll also do a Heaven Benchmark and then we'll go into some uh, full on uh, gaming in Crisis and we'll do Metro as well. Right then guys, uh, this test has been run with a stock as in reference or OEM. 570. You can see we've got an overall score of 26,263 uh, but look at that CPU score 72,000 and don't forget that's only with a 4.6 gigahertz overclock so absolutely mental. Uh, that does blow a 4 gigahertz 950 out the water. 
Anyway, let's move straight on and we're going to do uh, a full run of 3D Mark 11 now. Right then, on to 3D Mark 11. Again, this is with a stock 570 and this is in performance mode or P mode. Just so you guys know, that was Emma and she didn't realise I was still recording. Right then guys, I'm just going to flip this off quickly just so that I can show you. There we go, with a stock 570 and a 4.6 GHz 2600K, we get a 5330 performance score on 3D Mark 11. Absolutely bonkers. Right, let's move on to the next test. Right then guys, this is uh, the Heaven Benchmark. I'm literally just running benchmarks to show you what's possible with this now. Uh, this is literally just opened and started. So zero AA, tessellation on normal, everything literally just as when you start the benchmark up. It comes up with a box, start the benchmark straight away, not changing any settings. And that's the score that we've got. Again, if you want to compare this with other results, just go and look at the uh, full review on Overclock 3D. Right then, on to some gameplay. 
This is uh, Alien vs Predator. You can see the frames per second up in the top hand corner of the screen there. As I said, this is with a stock 570. Right, I'm going to stop moving the camera now. Right then guys, we are on Metro and we've got a single 570 and the CPU at 4.6 GHz as I said before. See the frames per second there. Uh, lowest we've gone is 32. All right, we've gone down to 30 now. We do need to remember that this is a complete uh, resource hog. You not only need a really good CPU, but you also need pretty substantial graphics as well to get this much above 30. But we're not getting any stuttering. It's playing the game fine. Right and guys, playing Crisis. This is uh, gamer settings at the moment. As you can see, we are getting between 50 and 70 frames a second. Who's shooting at me? Right, I'm going to make a run for the helicopter. See how far we get. I'm going to get the grenades out quickly. I'll go and grab some more if I've got time.
Oh, we didn't get the helicopter. Run out of grenades now as well. Play ball. No, 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 no. Right. Oh well. Let's turn the uh, all the settings right up. Right then guys, this is uh, with the game completely maxed out now. Let's go down onto the beach. See if I can get dead in. Getting a solid over 30 frames a second on this. It does do well in game, but it's not doing amazing. Right, we dipped down to 25 with that explosion. But I think that should give you a good enough um, amount of footage for you to make your mind up on, because I'm just about to die anyway. Right, let's move on to the conclusion. Right then guys and girls, uh, that's the end of a monumental amount of uh, gaming footage and benchmarks. I really wanted to try and do this justice. Uh, so for all of those haters out there that are moaning about the length of the video, if your attention span is about as long as a rat, then go and watch the other ones. For all of those that like the video, don't forget to comment. I'm expecting some dislikes anyway, but anyway, never mind. Nitty gritty, uh, the motherboard uh, is, obviously there's a lot there, you can see that at the moment it's just the BIOS holding everything back. Um, so more mature BIOS is, as it's the same with everything, the Rampage 3 was the same. As the BIOS got better, the clocks went up. Um, I've, as uh, you would have seen in one of the other videos, or you can go and see it if you want, already on an Intel board I'm getting 5.1 on this and I've benched at 5 gigahertz without too many problems. Heat was in the 70s with a 1.5 plus volt overclock or 1.5 volt plus uh, V-core but as I said it was uh, 5 gigahertz and it was at bench stable at that as well. It was absolutely bonkers. If you can hear any claps out in the background it's actually quarter past 11 on uh, New Year's Eve and I'm going to finish this video off and finally go and have a drink because it's the amount of the workload for Sandy Bridge has been immense. Um, long and short of it is, and it's the one that question that everyone wanted to answer, is the board good? The board's amazing. There's definitely a lot more to come. But everything is there for you to be able to get the most out of these CPUs once they sort the BIOS out. And uh, another question that everyone wants to know is is it better than a 950? Well, we pushed our 950 past 4.2 for some benching, I think it was 4.3, it eats the 950 at 4.3. Um, for the minimal amount of work that you have to do for 4.6 gigahertz on the 2600K, and comparing that to what I would call a minimum overclock on a 950, which is 4 gigahertz, it absolutely blows it out of the water. Uh, the overclocking on this is very strange, but there isn't a massive amount that you really have to tweak to be able to get way past 4 GHz on these. So for beginners, it's absolutely amazing. Um, I can't help but feel uh, that they've taken the fun out of the overclocking a bit with this, where it's just multiplier based. I don't know, uh, perhaps call me old fashioned, but I'm definitely... 
the the scores compared to a 950 you can't debate it in a, in game it's not that massive but when you're actually using benchmarks and stuff like that the sandy bridge leaves the 950 for dead uh, it leaves every 1156 possible for dead makes me wonder why these are so much better uh, like it, was there something they weren't telling us all along that and why is 1156 been replaced so fast lots and lots of questions uh, but at the end of the day, it's a cracking board for absolutely amazing processes. An awesome way for a beginner to get started with some serious, serious power. Uh, all really that we've got to do now is sit back and wait for new memory to come, new BIOSes to come, to really start to take uh, the, the most of these processes. I find it quite strange that they bring the top of the range board out way before launch as well. Uh, I think, to be quite honest with you, they should have waited for this and made sure that the BIOSes were absolutely airtight before they let us have them and staggered the launch rather than having seven boards or however many boards they got available right from the get-go. Um, I suppose they were trying to get people, the people that would have wanted to buy the Maximus and probably would have bought something else to give them the option straight from the go, but I personally would have wanted to have waited for decent boards or at least you know, let people know that these are coming so that some people will have held back. But anyway, BIOS is a disappointment. The rest of the performance with the processor was absolutely mind-bogglingly good. So big thumbs up. Get the BIOS fix. We want to see how well this board can really overclock. Uh, but end of a humongous video. Uh, there's fireworks going on in the background. I'm actually going to turn around and see if the camera can pick it up. Let me turn the lights off. Oh, they stopped! Anyway, after that complete shambles, because the fireworks have stopped now, I'm going to go off, crack open a bottle, uh, Bring in the new year with my good lady Emma and we will be back very very soon. You will be getting these videos from the 3rd but pretty much all of them are going to be going up on the 3rd and fireworks are starting again on the 3rd and the 4th. So make sure you check my channel for the rest of the videos. This is a very cheery, cleanly shaven, Tony Tom Logan out.